I'd like to greet and congratulate Karnataka for bringing to our country the IT revolution. And it is on and on. Uh, definitely, it will not stop at IT revolution. It will go into multiple fields. That's my topic. I'm going to talk to you, friends. Now, I would like to greet Honorable Chief Minister uh, Sadananda Gaudaji and uh, Murugesh Zorani Ji, Industry Minister, and my friends S. Gopalakshan and Sri Chandrasekhar, M. M. Vidyashankar, J. Pathasardi, and all of you friends from different organizations and particularly delegation from Bihar, Rajasthan, Tamil Nadu. Friends, indeed, I am delighted to participate in Bangalore IT Dot Base 2011 here in Bangalore, organized by Department of IT Biotechnology and the SNT Government of Karnataka and Software Technology Park of India, Bangalore. My greetings to the organizers, industrialists, professionals, students, and other distinguished present here. Present in the uh, friends in the past decade, India has seen many innovations who have revolutionized, usured in products and services in a cost-effective manner. Few years ago, we saw an automobile industry seeing a new design, which ensured the products meet the budget of the millions of families, millions, millions of families. Most probably, it was an Indian company which pioneered the development and marketing of the most cost-effective car in the world, the Nano. We all know the innovation. We also know the innovation of low-cost mobile phones, which has penetrated deep into the Indian markets and cut across the economic and professional groups. Further, this year, a few weeks ago, India launched the low-cost touchpad device especially designed for the students. A price is about 1200 dark cost computer is heralded to another era which India will also pioneer the low cost, high access internet enabled devices in near future. I see the next IT revolution similar to the mobile telephony may be such internet enabled devices spreading across urban and rural areas promoting e-commerce at grassroots levels, rapid knowledge exchange in way of city to city, city to village, village to city, and village to village modes. Recently, last week, I was at the Harvard University, where I visited the Harvard Innovation Laboratory. There I came across an engineering and a physics student together working on a system which can deliver high quality cable television services, cable television services, which can work across the diverse bandwidths of internet connections. Similarly, in Ahmedabad, I came across the National Innovation Foundation, which is doing a great work in showcasing the best grassroots innovation over the internet as an open source knowledge database. There are already many sites which are offering free multimedia based learning tools. I see the internet penetration in the nation which enables such collateral benefits of low cost cable television and open source knowledge research that to the common citizen. The reason I am telling you this innovation is highlight two important elements of innovation in Indian context. It is being cost effective at the same time efficient and then it should be able to spur productive and educational activity for the masses, especially children, women, and senior citizens of the nation. IT industry in the last few decades have given a pride of place for India in the world, as you all just now talked. <coughs> Among the many contributions it has done, what I would rate as the most significant is the confidence it has given to many young people, many youth, is the confidence it has given to the many youth in entrepreneurship. Now the question next is saturation should not take place. Since saturation of mind is the most dangerous phenomena against progress, the industry has to compete with itself and deliver excellence. 
I give it its unlimited potential every facet of human endeavor, offers opportunities and challenges, be it in the research, development, social sciences, governance, or individual growth in this context. I would like to share a few thoughts. A quite different from normal thing. I am going to say something else. IT industry graduating towards knowledge system powerhouse. IT industry graduating towards knowledge system powerhouse. Next 15 minutes I am going to talk to you friends. Friends, you all know the well-known formula. There is a formula which says the economic development of the nation is powered by competitiveness. Competitiveness is powered by knowledge. Knowledge is powered by technology and innovation. Of course, technology innovation is powered by timely resource investment. Then only political system comes in a big way. Now, in a unique situation emerging in the IT industry, it is not how many people working in the software and hardware, or even how many IT parts have been created in the nation. What matters? Really what matters most is how many system designers, how many system integrators, how many system managers are working in IT industry. I visualize that IT enterprises and the Indian academic research institution evolving a new type of creative personnel and they are having the capacity to become the knowledge system powerhouse instead of software engineers or hardware engineers or marketing piece of piecemeal software or hardware or marketing, marketing the human power. In this context, it is indeed refreshing to know that the Karnataka government is bringing together IT industry, biotechnology industry in a common forum like IT.BIS2011. As you all are aware, the new decade starting from 2011 to 2020, Indian technology enterprise team have to face the challenge of the convergence of technology and for that reason I will use the phrase knowledge system powerhouse where convergence of multiple technologies leads to national economic development. Let me talk about the convergence of technology. The information technology as you all know and communication technology have already converged leading to information communication technology ICT. The information technology combined with biotechnology, as you know, has led to the bioinformatics. Similarly, photonics is grown out from the laboratories to converge with classical electronics and microelectronics to bring in new high-speed option in consumer products like flexible and unbre unbreakable displays using thin layer of film on transparent polymers have emerged as a new symbol of entertainment and media tools. Now nanotechnology has come in. It is the field of the future that will replace microelectronics, I believe, and many fields with the tremendous application potential in the areas of medicine, electronic material science. I am sure about the use of nanorobots for drug delivery. When nanotechnology and ICT meet, integrated silicon electronics and photonics are born at the end it can be said that material convergence will happen material convergence will happen with material convergence and biotechnology linked a new science called intelligent bioscience will be born which would lead to a disease free happy and more intelligent human habitat with the longevity and the high human capacity Convergence of bio nano info technologies can lead to development of nano robots for multiple applications. Now, nano robots, when they are injected, I saw in one of the laboratories abroad, when the nano robots, when they are injected into a patient, my expert friend say nano robots made out of nano bio info, since all the three systems getting in. Nano robots, when they are injected into a patient, my expert friends say it will diagnose and deliver the treatment exclusively in the affected area and then the nano robot gets digested as it's a DNA based product. I saw the product sample in one of the laboratories in South Korea where best of minds with multiple technology work with the target of finding out the out of box solution. 
Now, friends, I'm going to share with you one new, one recent experience. That is, convergence of science is reciprocating. Let me give an example. Recently, I was at the Harvard University where I visited laboratories of many eminent professors from the Harvard School of Engineering and Applied Science. They don't call it applied, uh, School of Engineering, they call it Engineering Applied Science. I recall how Professor Hoon Park showed me his invention of nano needles, nano needles which can pierce and deliver content into individual targeted cells, human cells. That is how nanoparticle science is in shaping into biosciences. Then I met a professor, Vinod Monogran in Harvard, who showed, on the other hand, biosciences in intern shaping nanomaterial science as well. He is using DNA material to design self-assembling particles. When particular type of DNA is applied on a particle at the atomic level, he is able to generate a prefix behavior and automatic assembly from them. This could be an, our answer to self-assembly of devices and colonies in deep space without human intervention as invented by Dr. K. Eric Tetzler. Thus, within a single research building, thus within a single research building, I saw how do two different sciences are shaping each other without any iron curtain between the technologies. This reciprocating contribution of sciences to one another is going to shape our future and the industry needs to be ready for it. Friends, are you ready to bring down the iron curtain existing between various technological groups? This, this is a real question. Wherever you go for research institution, there are many groups, but I saw recently how it can be broken. Now, a new trend is emerging. The aspect being introduced is that your colleague, as Dr. Gopalakshan said, globally the demand is shifting towards development of sustainable systems which are technologically superior. This is the new dimension of 21st century knowledge society where science, technology and the environment will have to go together. Thus the new age model would be four dimensional. So far I was talking three dimensional, bio, info, nano, but it has to be four dimensional, bio, nano, info, eco based. I would like to, to, I would like to say to all the stakeholders assembled here, including policy makers, you get ready for such a multi-dimensional revolution which will shape the future of humanity. Also, it can be remembered, India has got a big dream to have IT business for $200 billion within this decade. And, and all the more, friends, you need to be geared to address such a dynamic technological environment. Let us see another dimension of technology. In the 20th century, most, most nations understood that science and technology were the best vehicle for economic upliftment. However, the problems that SND used to solve have been primarily local and customized to their needs. Today, the problems faced by the nation are no longer a concern of them alone. Humanity is devoting more and more attention to climate change, energy, water, disease, economic turbulence and terrorism, which are all the concern of the entire world and the solution for which are beyond the individual nation or group of nations. If SMD has to provide upliftment to our humanity, if the research and development are in the areas with porous borders between them, and if the problems the world know not of geographical borders, the education that becomes the foundation of all the science and technology, research and development also necessarily must become borderless. When I was traveling recently in an aircraft in the United States, I was told much of the country, I had 15 hours I have to fly into New York, then captain called me to his, to his control center. I was told that much of his control were software driven, most properly developed in India, fly by wire. When I presented, by presenting my credit card, I was told that it was being processed in the back end server located in Mauritius. When I walked into the software development center in Bangalore, about a few months back, I was fascinated to find that truly presented a multicultural environment. A software developer from China, 
uh, working under a project leader from Korea, working with a software engineer from India, and a hardware architect from the US, and a communication expert from Germany, we are all working together to solve a banking problem in Australia. <laughs> I, this is a situation, when I see, this is, this is I in Bangalore, when I see all of them working together, like one family forgetting about the culture from which they came, or the language they spoke, I feel that the only hope for such a borderless interaction to continue is to inculcate the spirit of borderless in all our organizations. Now I have a few thoughts for vision for IT industry. Chandrasekhar put forth very nicely, but let me elaborate what I feel. Now I would like to suggest a vision for IT industry which will which enable IT sector to make higher level of contribution for managing the challenges associated with globalization and societal transformation within India of 600,000 villages. Presently, IT industry has a vision to establish India as a 21st century software powerhouse and position the country as a global sourcing hub for software and services. We find over the years, the rate of growth of software industry in India has slowed down and it may continue further. To combat the situation, IT business may consider broadening the vision to become a knowledge system powerhouse instead of software powerhouse. Also to achieve a global operation, IT sector can consider introduction of a virtual platform for development of a knowledge product based on the national experience in engineering design of multiple systems simultaneously working for multiple nations. Now what is knowledge system powerhouse? I was thinking how we can provide a step input for the growth of ICT sector in the next 10 years and reach at our goals of 200 billion dollars export target. It is possible only through certain out of box solutions. IT business and mission are definitely going to change. IT solution will en enlarge knowledge products and system. For example, take bioinformatics, <laughs> convergence of nano bio IT products and the evolution of a system through world knowledge platform based on the core competence of multiple nations will enable realization of the best products competitively. In such a mission, value addition and wealth generation multiplies many folds. I visualize an integrated communication infrastructure with global knowledge resources using multiple technologies such as IT, satellite communication, fiber optic communication and wireless using hardware and software talent that will power the global sourcing in an Internet 2 environment. The integrated missions of architecture, design, technology, development, realization of the product and leading to system delivery may take place in multiple partner countries uh, with the integrating responsibly located nodal center. This type of a challenge will need the working together of many IT companies and multiple technologies within the country in a consortium mode and accepting partnership from many countries in the world. In the implementation process, people uh, in implementation process, the people have to, uh, the ideas may, in the implementation process, people do not move from country to another. Only the ideas move as electrons in the, in the auto system, as electrons, aerospace, as move in the automobile system, aerospace system, and healthcare system. Can our IT industry take up the challenge of such a vision and progress? Now friends, last point, few last point I want to convey. So friends, in all areas of technology development, which will bring benefit to the society at large, we need to think globally and locally. It could be packaging technology to different specification and requirement of customers in different parts of the world to quality, to quality and affordable cost. It could mean the effective use of core competence wherever it exists. It would mean the nations have to see differently technology position from a currency power to a tool of development of all nations. It could mean legal and political process giving the needed protection for intellectual property rights. Should, all, should also facilitate cooperation and healthy competition among the nations. The leaders have to think globally and act locally. There has to be global vision of human progress and the leaders have to work towards that. 
I was studying a different dimension of knowledge society. How will it be different from the industrial economy? In the knowledge economy, the objective of a society changes from fulfilling the basic needs of all round development to the empowerment. The education system, instead of going by next book, in the, in the education system, instead of going by textbook, teaching will be promoted by creative, interactive, self-learning, formal and informal with focus on values, merit and quality. The workers, instead of being skilled or semi-skilled, will be knowledgeable, self-empowered and flexibly skilled. The type of work, instead of being structured and hardware driven, will be structured and software driven. Management style will be a delegative rather than being directive. Impact on the environment ecology will be strikingly less. Will be, will be knowledge driven. The key infrastructure required for this is that of telecom and the related tools of communication, computers and software. Friends, what is needed for realizing the innovation is the nurturing the cultural excellence. Culture, what is culture of excellence? Friends, excellence is not by accident. It is a process where an individual or an organization or nation continuously strives to better oneself. The performance standards are set by themselves. They work on their dreams with focus and are prepared to take calculated risk, do not get deterred by failures as they move towards their dreams. Then they step up their dreams as they tend to reach the original targets. They strive to work for their potential. In the process, they increase their performance, thereby multiplying further their potential. Uh, and this is an unending life cycle phenomenon. That is the culture of excellence. The culture of excellence needs an organization, more youth with creativity who strive to be a unique. The CEO and the industry leaders assembled here may deliberate the thoughts I have put forward IT industry graduating towards knowledge system powerhouse and an award strategy for multi-country participation through World Knowledge Platform. Friends, in conclusion, I have seen three dreams which have taken shape as a vision, mission and realization. One at the uh, space program, uh, that is evolving, launching the program. Another is the Agni program of uh, defense, that is uh, long range missile system. Third one, what is called Pura, providing Arimpen Amenities rural area, becoming the national mission. Now, Pura is the national mission. Of course, these three programs succeeded in the midst of many challenges and problems. I have worked in all these three areas. I would like to convey to you that what I have learned on leadership from these three programs. Number one, leader must have a vision. Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, uh, he gave us in 1960s, at that time there was no communication satellite in the orbit. And he put us in building the launch vehicle dream and satellite dream. Today we can make any type of launch vehicle, any type of spacecraft. Similarly, in the agriculture sector, 1960s we have produced only 50 million tons of food. Today we produce 235 million tons of food. These are two visionaries. One is political, C. Subramaniam, and another is Dr. Swaminathan. Leader must have a vision and also leader must have passion to accomplish the mission. Not only mission, leader must have a passion to accomplish the mission. Leader must be able to travel into unexplored path. Whomever I come across, the great leader, they don't follow any path others have made. Leader must know how to manage success and failure. Easy to manage the success. But when failure comes, how do you manage? For example, I, I still remember 1979 when I launched my first launch vehicle, it's a failed. But at that time when I was the mission director, project director, normally abroad they will fire you from the establishment. <laughs> But my chief, with that is Professor Satish Dhawan, Chairman Isro, he conducted a press conference. He said, we have failed. We have failed first time in launching, but uh, we are going to learn. And I'm going to give all support my scientists, technologists and staff. And in a year, we'll come to, come to success. In a year, we came to success. In 1980, came to success. That's there. No, not important thing, something else. There, he asked me, so the chairman said, asked me, you go and contact the press conference. <laughs> Do you follow my message? When the failure comes, this is all, you are the leaders. 
When the failure comes, leaders absorb the failure. When the success comes, the leader gives the success to his team. <laughs> so, when the next part, leader must have courage to take this decision. Leader must have courage when you take a decision, and I have experienced hundreds of decisions, some go wrong. But you should be in a position to be uh, courageous to take such a decision. The leader should have nobility in management. Management and nobility will go together, yes or no? Will go together? <laughs> Very good. Leader must have the noble. For every action, the leader should be transparent.